I love, love, love any boundary that I can set because I'll set it, communicate it, and then enforce it. I don't expect a dog, like I recommend no dog on the couch, no dog on the bed. These are important human spaces. When a dog is allowed up on the couch or the bed, they are on the same level as us. And I want my dog to understand, like, I love you so much and I am completely devoted to making your life as amazing as possible. And like, we are not on the same level. We're not. Is it possible to now train him off? A hundred percent. How do I do that? A hundred percent. So our dogs live in the present moment, right? They have a norm, but they do not expect the future to look like the past. So first of all, just understanding that it is incredibly possible. Dogs would come to board at my house who were allowed on the couch and on the bed and to follow their owner and to come into the bathroom. And within an hour, they would understand, hey, don't get on that couch because like she bothers you every time you get on the couch. Like it's actually much easier to just lay in your dog bed. You could have him drag a leash in the house and then when he gets up, say, off and then wait and if he doesn't get down off and then I can expect that at first that will not work and that's no problem because I always want to start where I want to end so what I want in the future to be effective is just for me to nicely say off and have it work so I'm going to start there because I need for my dog to start understanding that if you ignore me, things get increasingly unpleasant and they stay that way until you listen to me. So if he doesn't listen after the second ask, pick up the leash, pulse, 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 and you're gonna say off and just have him associate the word. Then when he gets off, ah, how nice is it that I'm no longer pulsing on the leash and saying the word off while staring at you? isn't it the best? And then let him figure out, hey, lay on your bed, lay on the floor. So the other option is that you're just going to get more and more tuned into him. And you'll notice when he gets up and starts walking to the couch and you can, without looking at him, just go, uh -uh. and then he's going to stop and kind of look at you. And then just say, uh -uh, go to your bed. And then after that, see what he does. Because sometimes that will be enough. And other times they're like, eh, I'm going to ignore you and try to do it anyway. And then you're like, okay, great. Like, then I'm going to do the off the couch protocol. And if we sufficiently annoy them, I call it disincentivizing a behavior. And this is nice because when I have a protocol in place, it doesn't have to be emotional. You're not insulting me by trying to get up. You're just an animal trying to see what they can get away with. And like, don't we all? Like I speed when I'm pretty sure there's no cops around. Cause like I'm an animal doing what I'm pretty sure I can get away with. So when he does it, I'm like, oh, you know, well, this is the protocol. We, uh, you know, we gotta, here I am, and then the feeling is like, well, I don't make the rules. You know, this is just what we do now. Like, talk talk to the boss if you have a problem with it. Like, you know, this is just, you know, I have it written down. So when I can come at it without the emotionality, and I'm just really calm and consistent, and I can do the progression from say it nicely to more sternly, to, okay, now I'm bothering you. And a lot of people will just grab their dog and drag them off. I don't do that. I want to annoy them until they make the decision that getting off is a way to get me to stop annoying them. They're like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get down. And I want them to decide because I can drag them and move their body, but their brain hasn't learned anything. I might even bring his crate out here 
and do no dogs in the bedroom for a little while. And that is going to be super, super, super powerful for he's going to sleep in the crate. He's going to be out of your room. You guys are going to independently regulate. Okay. So I kind of recommend just making a full pivot and it's what works for each individual and like what you're going to be consistent with. Like, I just want to get it all over as quickly as possible. So I recommend like just going whole hog on all the changes immediately because they all complement each other. They all work together to change the way our dogs see us and change the way they see the world. So when he gets distracted by a sound, like, did you see that? Mm -hmm. So he alerted. Yeah. And then he, he didn't look really, but in his mind, he's like, what is that? Is it a problem? So when I just get his attention and that's okay, he's going to think I want to interact, but that's fine. Let's see what he does. Um, so I'm going to just subtly ignore him and he took that cue, which is perfect. Sometimes people over command their dogs. And I'm like, let's just see what happens because maybe they're going to make a choice that I like and then I'll have like guided them or corrected them for nothing.